Man, WebSockets are a topic I've long been ambiguous about. Because on one hand, the protocol is entirely different and that honestly makes it sound quite challenging to technically integrate into uh, whatever programming language you're running. Whether that is Python or JavaScript, just the protocol being WS or WSS in the secure case uh, instead of being HTTP or HTTPS makes it sound quite hard. And also, how the hell does simultaneous like real-time communication between one client, one server, and then on the other end, way more clients even work? Like that must be hard to integrate, right? Nevertheless, in this video, we're not talking too much about the technical integration in one programming language, but instead we're gonna take a look at the concept. So how do WebSockets work? What are some examples on the internet that use WebSockets? They are used often in chat apps and basically anything that needs to be real time. So that also includes like uh, browser games, chat apps. Um, we'll take a look at some examples and I'll also introduce you to the WS, like WebSockets tab in the network developer tools that if you've never worked with WebSockets before, you might not even have known that it existed, but it is really handy. So let's take a look at one example I've created and then add a browser game to see how do WebSockets really work and why you should use them. Before getting in the most ugly example, but very practical though, that you've ever seen in your life, let me explain you the basics. And I am very qualified to do that because I have um, three art PhDs. So let me uh, show you the basics, all right? We have a, a server here, this is the server, and this is the client, okay? And now, when we load the web page, the client makes a request to the server, like that over the WS protocol. And the client basically asks the server, hey dude, uh, let's make a WebSockets connection. And then the server has two options, either it agrees or it doesn't agree. Um, in our case, we wanted to agree. So the server sends back, okay, we can do that. Also over the WS or WSS for the secure case connection. And uh, that is called the TCP handshake. So the, the both parties are pretty much like, yeah, that's cool, we can do that. And now a WebSockets connection is established. Now, okay, now that we got the basics done, we can see that um, right here in the browser, in the WebSockets example that I've prepared just for you. So um, if we restart the page, we can take a look at the uh, network tab. And this is what it looks like. We have a bunch of requests to JavaScript bundles, and all that jazz, we don't care about that. But if you look at the um, type, you can see, aha, there are WebSocket types. So there's not uh, only document, scripts, uh, icons, whatever, there's also WebSockets. And we can look at those in detail. If you look um, up here, there's a WS. So if you go to the network tab and then navigate to WS, we can just, uh, only show the uh, WebSocket connections that are established on the server. And now based on the technology I've used to assemble this example, there's gonna be some stuff we don't really care about like this one or the Webpack HMR, which keeps pinging the server just to make sure it's working. But what we do care about is this connection right here. So this is a connection to localhost. And essentially what it does is the establish, uh, like establishing the a handshake that I've just shown you. So the client makes a request and the server answers right here with a status code of 101 switching protocols. So that means from the original HTTP request that the client sent, the server answers, okay, we can establish a WebSockets connection. Therefore, let's switch the protocols from HTTP, which us usually goes like uh, right here in front of the URL to WebSockets. And by doing that, the connection is established and kept open. You know, traditionally with a, a HTTP request, the um, client sends a request over, the server answers with the data, and then the request is over. And when you want to do another request, um, for example, via Ajax, then the process just repeats. You send the original request and the server answers, and uh, that keeps happening. But with WebSockets, the connection stays open. So there are not gonna be uh, any more network requests while we are interacting with the WebSocket server. Instead, they will be shown right here. So you can see, for example, when I type a letter and each letter will emit a WebSockets event. 
So I can type Q and you can see the letter that I typed right here. And you can also see what happens right here. So these red arrows mean we receive data from the server and the green arrows mean we are uploading WebSockets data to the server. And as you can see, um, the green arrow right here, ID3 method mutation, um, JSON Q, so the Q is the letter we typed in, and we are uploading that to the WebSocket server. And we can also take a look at the time that was used for that request. So if we take a look at the time right here, we uploaded the ser um, to the server, the data, the letter Q that we pressed it, we uploaded that to the server. And that happened at the time 18.25. So the time we have right now, PM, um, 55 seconds and 566 milliseconds. Now, the time until we got the answer back from the server, which is uh, just, you know, a generic answer that doesn't really matter for this example, it came back 0.01 milliseconds later, which is really good for actual real time. And I mean that like 0.01 milliseconds is nothing real time communication. So whenever I press a letter like R, T, Z, you can see uh, what's happening on the server. We're uploading the key and then we're getting the server response back like 0.01 milliseconds later. And that is really what WebSockets is about. Um, you're not fetching data, for example, every five seconds. That would be uh, one thing you could do. Um, like for example, if you wanted to emulate or simulate real-time communication, you could have the client here, the server here, and then every five seconds you send a request to the server like this first request and then you have the second request after five seconds third request after five seconds that would be called interval polling and depending on your use case you are actually or you could be fine with that so for example not in a real-time chat app but one project that i did was a you know, doctor's booking software. And whenever a patient booked, then that booking should be reflected in the admin dashboard, but it didn't really need to be like completely real time. And that's where this interval polling came in handy. Um, or also there's a form of long polling, which is an alternative to WebSockets. Uh, so you have the client over here and you have the server over here again. And now the client sends a request to the server and the server keeps that request open, just like WebSockets, until it gets data. So it gets data from an external source. For example, something happened that should be propagated to the client. And then the server sends that data back to the client and thereby closes the request. So in this arrow right here, the request gets closed, uh, but only uh, if data gets you know to the server. And then when the data is on the client, immediately another request is sent to the server until the server gets data again and so on and so forth. So that uh, could also be used to simulate real-time communication, but the most convenient approach would be with WebSockets in the approach I showed you right here, because the delay is essentially non-existent and that allows you to create games like um, browser uh, battle royales. Um, so one example I used to see how WebSockets work was this game right here. And it's gonna be really interesting what you're gonna be able to see here in a second. Um, so these also use WebSockets and we can go to this tab right here. No, was it this one? Yeah, okay, so you see a lot of binary messages being sent right here. Um, and that is essentially the uh, other users that I need to know the position of so they can be rendered on my screen. Here on the right hand side, you can see the time, like the actual um, time that is passing. And as you can see, if I do anything in this game via WebSockets, that will be communicated. So if I'm moving around, if I'm pressing buttons, you can see uh, like those green arrows popping up if I'm looking around, um, because every, every single thing that's happening is being sent as binary via WebSockets to the server. So real-time communication can happen between me and the other players that are in this uh, you know live real-time game. So that's what I thought was a very interesting use case of um, WebSockets. And um, I did a little hangman game here. So hangman. So each time a right letter is pressed, then it inserts in here. And the cool thing about WebSockets is you can connect from different devices. So let's reload the page here and here. And you can see in the uh, server, 
the server always knows how many com connections there are. So right now there are four connections divided by two. That means there are two users connected. If I disconnect from this local host, you can see the connection left. So it can see the connections in real time. And that also means that both clients that are connected to the same game will get the same data. So let's do a little split screen right here. We can close that for a second. And if I press the H on this left browser window, you can see it also gets propagated to the right side client. And I can do that as often as I want. Now that H wouldn't be shown on the third window because only letters that are pressed now will be shown on the third window because we are keeping this as state and when reloading the page, the state gets lost. So I can press something here and it will get propagated to every client that was connected before. So if I press K here, you can see on the other browser windows, the K is also visible. And then when I press an H, A, N, G, M, then, you know, all browsers or all clients that are connected to the same WebSocket server see the exact same thing. And I think that is really cool. Okay, that was pretty much it with my uh, example and my demonstration of how the hell uh, WebSockets work. I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.